Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I'm so excited for today's guest. His name is Chuck Underwood. He is from the blog Brand New Vegan, and he's not only going to cook his favorite red chili sauce, he's going to talk a little bit about his recent stroke. Please welcome Chuck to the show. It's so great to see you. Hi, Chef AJ. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So, Chuck, how long has Brand New Vegan been around? Uh, the blog came about in 2013. So it's been about 10 years. Yeah, long time. You're not Brand New Vegan anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now I teach all the other Brand New Vegans. <gasps> nice. I love your apron, by the way. I, I have the same one. So that's great. So what would you like to do? Cook first, talk first, do a combination? Well, the first thing I'm going to be doing as far as cooking is cleaning chilies. And I'll explain that in a second. So we can talk why clean. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, so this is my favorite New Mexico red chili sauce. I recently uh, modified it a little bit. My recipe that I had, I don't even know when I first posted it. it I got a lot of flack from New Mexicans because I had tomato sauce in it. And uh, they yelled at me for not being authentic. So who, who is they? Who is they that yelled at you? New Mexicans. Oh, okay. And I understand completely. Now it's authentic. This is my revised version. And it's just as good. It's a lot easier, actually. So the first thing you're going to have to have are New Mexico chili pods. And they come in a little bag like this. And you can find these in any grocery store if you look down the... Uh, the ethnic aisle, the Hispanic aisle, whatever you want to call it, where they have the salsa and the tortillas. You'll see these hanging on the wall. And for New Mexico chili sauce, you want to make sure you get New Mexican chilies. And they come dried like this. Now, if you can't find New Mexico chilies, this is a close alternative. This is a Mexican chili. It's called Guajillo. And a lot of stores have this too. The flavor is a little bit different. They're a little bit softer to deal with as far as cleaning them. And the taste, it's close, but not quite the same. If you can find New Mexican, get that. If you can't, these are a close second. I love so, chili. Oh, I do too. I lived in Albuquerque close to 10 years as I was working for Intel. And I just fell in love with the culture and especially the food, the green chili, the red chili. So when I finally figured out how to make this at home, now that I'm here in Oregon, it was it was heaven. It's like I can enjoy my chili sauce anytime I want now. So when you have these chilies, I like to bake them a little bit first. You can use a toaster oven like I have over here. You can use your regular oven. If you have an air fryer combo, you want to use really low heat, like 250. You don't want to cook them. But if you toast them, it helps these seeds inside. And that's what we're cleaning. I don't know if you can see that or not. It helps these seeds kind of dry up and they'll rattle right out. And that's what you want to do is clean as many of these seeds out of your chilies as you can. It is a messy. You'll get seeds everywhere but it's so worth it. And this time I'm using my Instapot to rehydrate these. Once I clean them, I'm gonna turn this Instapot on for about oh, five minutes on manual, on high pressure, just to kind of rehydrate these and soften them up before we blend them. You don't have to have an Instapot, it makes it easy. You can use your stove and a pot of water just uh, bring it to a boil, add your chilies, steep them like five minutes until they're soft, and then drain out the uh, drain out the water. And I save the water. I use the water as I'm uh, blending this, the chili water. Some people say it makes it bitter. So my suggestion is when you're done steeping these, and we'll get there in a second, taste the water. If it's bitter, just dump it and add fresh water. Okay. Nice. And this is the last one. I kind of cheated, got started because it's such a pain. 
Something else about chilies, if you're not familiar with them, any kind of chili, whether it's jalapeno or these New Mexican chilies, there's an oil in the chili called capsaicin. I think I'm saying that right. And it will burn. If you accidentally itch and you rub your eye and you don't wash your hands, it will burn. So if you're not familiar with chilies, wear gloves. And these are all the seed pods and the seeds. Or at the very least, wash your hands afterwards to get that oil off your fingers. So if you do accidentally rub your eye or something, it won't burn like heck. Yep, gloves are a good idea. And latex-free if you have a latex allergy. That's right. So I have this nifty little Instapot strainer that makes getting the chilies out of here a lot easier. All I'm going to do is add my two cups of water. And drop these boys in and start this up. I'm totally backwards here. Okay, Emmanuel, five minutes. I love it. Do and you have a favorite Instant Pot? This is the old, original, I don't know if it was one of the first ones or not. It's the seven and one. The one that, I do remember that one. And then that, that yeah. would be a six quart, right? Yes. And they've changed a lot since then. There's so many different models and varieties, but this one, it, it keeps right on working for me. So I'm happy with it. That's great. So we have some time while that's steeping. You want to talk about my stroke? Yeah, but first I want to just talk about you. When did you first hear about a plant-based or vegan diet? And when did you adopt one? 2008, I was... Uh, I was self-employed, working for uh, myself in a computer repair store, and that was the year of the uh, recession. So I had to close that business. I had a lot of free time. I started watching documentaries. <clears throat> My whole career has been in semiconductor, in electronics, like Intel, Texas Instruments, et cetera, and always night shift, graveyard shift. So I wasn't in the best health. Um, I was really overweight, like 225, 230. Uh, my blood pressure was through the roof. I worked nights. My sleep schedule was horrible. Uh, I smoked back then. I drank a lot. So my health wasn't all that great. And I found this documentary called Process People. And that's where I got introduced to Dr. John McDougall. Um, I think John Robbins was in that movie. And uh, Oh, a few, a few of our heroes were in that old 2008 documentary, and I instantly fell in love with McDougal, his, his attitude, <laughs> his style, and that led me to more documentaries and more things. And I said, you know, I, I want to try this. I want to be vegan. So I came home. And I told my wife. I said, "Honey, I don't believe it's raining right now. What's that? Who was that? Was that Alexa?" I think so, or Siri. Wow. <laughs> on my phone. Be quiet. Anyway, I came home. I told my wife, I want to be vegan. And she laughed hard. And then she got mad. And she said, I don't know anything about it. She literally threw her apron at me and said, well, I'm not cooking. I don't know anything about it. So I started cooking. And one thing led to another. I came up with a few recipes I liked. I wanted to save them so I could find them. I started my little blog, and that was in 2013. So that was about five years worth of me experimenting and trying new foods and things I liked and things I didn't like, and slowly getting all that old meat and dairy and oil and all that bad stuff out of my diet. So I became fully 100% in 2013. I started my blog. My wife just recently became 100%, like within the last year. Wow, it, she, it, took, her, it took her that long, huh? She was, she's stubborn. Um, and she was, she was close. She was like 95, 97%. But she had an episode a while back where we were both kind of sick with colds, not COVID. And 
we were taking NyQuil. I was taking NyQuil so I could sleep. And she took some. She does have high blood pressure. And for whatever reason, it shot her blood pressure through the roof. And she had a nosebleed. And it wouldn't stop. And this was late at night. And next thing I know, I'm taking her to the emergency room at midnight for a nosebleed that just wouldn't quit. And they checked her blood pressure. And it was crazy, like 215 over 110 or 115. It was nuts. And she said, that's it. I'm done. I'm on board. What do we do? Why do you think it is that so many people wait until the 11th hour to change their doctor and not be, change their doctor, change their diet and not be proactive? I wish I knew. I've, I've gotten to the point where I have to be very careful, especially around my family. My wife and I eat this way. My daughter, my stepdaughter, kind of, I think. I haven't talked to her in a long while. But I still have some other family members, extended family and friends. And while I may think it's the best thing for them to help their problems, they, they're not ready to hear that message yet. Yeah. Well, you can only do what it, you can do. Yeah, I know. So I just keep doing my thing. And they support the business. They know what I teach. They know what I preach. And I've had a few people asked me, family members, and uh, one friend of ours who's diabetic, I actually came to visit for a few days and forgot her insulin. And so I cooked for her for two days. And within two days, her blood, her blood sugar was perfectly fine. It was the best it's been in years. And the doctor hasn't been able to get it under control. And I said, see, it can work. But you got to do this. You got to eat this way 100%. You can't go back and cheat. You can't, you know. So they know. But sometimes they're, I don't know, the, the old lifestyle, the old sad diet, it's so hard to break free of. It really is for a lot of people. Yeah. I, I You know, and the thing is, is it's not like the food isn't delicious. Your recipes are fantastic. Thank you. I think so. And I tell people in my blog, this is what I eat. These are the, I mean, these aren't just blog recipes to be a blogger. This is actually what I eat. And uh, some of the recipes on my on my website, I eat over and over and over, like this red chili sauce. How are we doing, by the way? There's a question on those chilies, and you might have answered it, but sometimes I see the chat after you say things. Are the New Mexico dried chilies the same as the dried hatch chilies? maybe <laughs> maybe hash is what put new mexico on the map for chilies and hash is really known for their green chili and hatch is a little tiny town in southern new mexico where the conditions are just right to grow the best chili ever and i know a lot of people in colorado we had a rivalry they'll disagree but still the red chili from new mexico I hope it comes from hatch. You, you really don't know. There's a the whole state grows chili, but the hatch chili is really specific for the green, and it's, it's what became famous. Nice. Kathy wants to know what your apron says. It says, I can't read it from here. Maybe I can, oh, I'm backwards in my camera. Here, if you pull it up, I'll read it, okay? Okay. Let me put, I got to put it in gallery mode. So let's see. Oh boy. You you have to talk because I can't see it if you're, if, if I'm talking. Oh, okay. There we go. Vegan. I know you can never knew to do that. No, I don't eat fish. This, <laughs> yep. I, okay. Let's see if I put my glasses on. Let uh, me get a little closer. Yeah. Get a little bit closer. Now I'm too tall. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, you know Sorry. what? I, I'll find out because I have that in my Amazon store. So I will find out. And I can raise it up a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. You know what? You keep talking. I will. I will find out, and I'll. I'll get it from my Amazon store, and I'll. And I'll put the link in. People want to buy it, and I'll tell them what it's. What it said. My friend Trish bought this for me. She's one of the admins on my Facebook group. Nice. And when you're making red chili, that's something I didn't say. It does stain everything. So don't wear your best clothes. Don't wear your white t-shirt or your white blouse. Uh, wear something. Wear your cruddy clothes because if it gets on you or your utensils or anything, it does leave a red stain. It's hard to get out. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when did you have a stroke and what was that like? 
it was ironically on my dad's birthday. He's been gone for a few years now. It was February 24th, 2020. I woke up like any other day, but I felt funny. And it was a feeling I've never felt before. Uh, this was before COVID. So I'm sure COVID was around in February. It hadn't really gone worldwide yet. Uh, it wasn't a pandemic yet, I don't think. Wasn't even on my radar that it could be that. I felt dizzy and I've never had vertigo, but I think I think that's what vertigo might have felt like because it was just a weird disorientation type feeling and almost stick to my stomach. And the funny thing is I was a medical response team leader at one of my jobs here in uh, Oregon. So we had some EMT training. I was like two steps away from being a basic EMT one, emergency medical tech. I know the symptoms of a stroke and I could do this. I didn't have any drooping. I didn't have anything. I just felt funny. And when my wife came home, I started talking funny. I was slurring my words. And she really wanted to take me to the doctor. But I'm stubborn. And I said, nah, it's not a stroke. It'll be okay. I'll sleep it off. I'll be fine tomorrow. Only I wasn't. It was worse. And so I told her, I think you better take me to the doc. And why we didn't go to the emergency room, I don't know. But we went to our family doc. He was busy. And they took my symptoms at the front desk and the nurse went back and talked to him and came right back out and said, get the ER now. So I have never been in the hospital before. And I just turned 60 last week. So for well, 60 birthday. years, thank you. 60 years, I've never been in the hospital other than to, to visit. So it was a whole new experience, but boy, they got me in quick and they started poking and prodding. I was still talking funny and they got me back in the room and they ran an MRI that ran a whole bunch of tests, uh, CAT scans. Uh, they checked my carotids. They checked my blood pressure was high, but I was really scared too. It was like 170 over. And I've been eating vegan for a long time. So I was really shocked at that. It was like 170 over 101, 105, something like that. And my cholesterol was high. And I couldn't understand that either. I don't eat animal products. I don't eat dairy. Um, I don't eat oil. I don't eat fatty processed food. I mean, maybe a little bit here and there, but not that much. I couldn't understand why my cholesterol was so high. And I had two different nurses in the hospital come up to me and say, we don't check vegetables have cholesterol. I'm like, what? I, I told one nurse, I said, you got a computer back there behind your little monitor? You might want to go look that up, but you're wrong. Vegetables don't have cholesterol. Okay. Yeah, I've never heard that either. Yeah, two nurses told me that. I just couldn't believe it. So after they, were, they ran their tests, they finally came up with uh, the MRI results. And I did have what they call a small ischemic, acute ischemic stroke. So that's the hemorrhaging or the uh, clot kind of stroke, not the hemorrhaging kind. It's a little tiny dot, right hand side of my brain. And they kept me overnight for observation. So I was like, okay, guys, you figured out what was wrong. I don't know why. And nobody could tell me why. <laughs> There's a funny meme. I'm sure we've all seen it. How do you know if somebody's vegan? Don't worry, they'll tell you. I was that person. I was going everywhere in the hospital. Why did I have a stroke? I'm vegan. I can't have a stroke. I'm vegan. Tell me why this happened. And nobody could. They have no idea. It could have been stress. It could have been... Maybe something related to COVID before it came out. I don't know. I'll have I'll never know. I have no idea. But I said, okay, you guys figured it out. Now what are you going to do about it? Well, they gave me pills. Five different pills to take. Blood pressure medicine, which I'd never been on before. Uh, cholesterol medicine. And I had to take them or they wouldn't let me go home. 
They had me on baby aspirin, which is the blood thinner. They had me on Plavex, which is the uh, an antiplatelet that goes along with the blood thinner. And I looked at my discharge papers and they said I would be on Plavex for the rest of my life. And I was like, oh, heck no. So who could I talk to? My doc, he's not gonna know anything about this, but I knew one doctor who would call me if I emailed him, Dr. Esselstyn. And he called me back. And he said, Chuck, you're in Portland, right? You need to go see Craig McDougal. Well, I know Craig. Craig used to be my doctor when I was at Kaiser. And he was a really good doctor. He, he left Kaiser, and I haven't seen him since, uh, maybe at a veg fest or something. But um, I had to uh, figure out how to get hold of him. But I knew it was that. So I emailed Dr. John. And I said, Dr. McDougal. How do I get hold of your son, Craig? I just had a stroke. I he put everything in an email to him and he comes back and he says, you know what? You need to come to my 10 day in Santa Rosa. Now, book your flight for the next one. And if I'll be there, Mary will be there. If I have to, I'll take over your case. Well, either Dr. Lim or Dr. McDougal as my doctor in Santa Rosa would have been amazing. So I did it. I booked everything. I had to flight. I had to rent a car. Um, I had to hotel, Santa Rosa, the 10 day program, which is pretty expensive, but I paid for it. And then COVID really hit and they shut it down for the first time ever. And I'm like, oh, great. Now what? Now what do I do? Okay, so we're done with our five minutes. I'm going to let this naturally release its pressure for another 10 before I get rid of steam. Um, so I did what I thought they were gonna do for me, what I knew, I, I know the Medugal program, I've read the Start Solution, I've watched many of Dr. John's videos, uh, I've met him and Mary personally several times. And um, I still have that picture I love of you and Brenda Davis and John and Mary when we were at Remedy, beautiful picture. So I do what he would tell me. He would say, clean up your diet, no fat of any kind, no nuts, no seeds, absolutely no oil, uh, easy on the tofu and the avocados, exercise every day and see what happens. So that's exactly what I did. And I kept a record of it in a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. I marked my weight every morning, um, my blood pressure, if I took any of the pills, which ones did I take? If I had any uh, aspirin or ibuprofen, I marked that. How many steps I walked that day? I did it for 30 days. And that was about time for me to visit my doctor and my neurologist for my 30 day follow up after the stroke. My neurologist canceled, but I had a Zoom meeting with my doctor. And by then, my blood pressure was perfectly fine. And he, he got me off all the medications I was on, except for the Plavix. So I really wanted to get off of this stuff. I didn't want to take it for the rest of my life. And I finally got a hold of her, showed her my chart, showed her my spreadsheet. And she said, what you've done is amazing, but I can't, I can't see taking you off of it right now. I said, yeah, but doc, I don't have any. I ran out. Oh, I'll call it into your pharmacy. She never did. I've never heard from her again. Oh. I've tried to contact her. I've tried to email her. She's disappeared. So I guess as far as she's concerned, I talked to my, my family doc. He says, you know what? You're doing amazing. I wouldn't worry about it. So I've been off all the medication ever since. It took me 30 days of doing what I thought would be uh a 10 day medugal program of my own based on what if, everything I've learned from Dr. John and Mary. And it worked. I dropped like 18 pounds, my blood pressure came down. I feel fine. And I was in the hospital for one day and they sent me home with no side effects whatsoever. 
But when I was in the hospital and I was, I was uh, lamenting to all the docs about being vegan, how can this happen? One doc finally said to me, you know, Chuck, you shouldn't be asking yourself why you had a stroke as a vegan. You should thank yourself that you were vegan when you had your stroke. He says, because trust me, I see stroke victims every day and they usually don't have a good outcome. And you're fine. You're perfectly fine. You're normal. I just jumped up and down on the bed. I was doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so that was a whole unique perspective for me. Maybe it was my lifetime of eating junk food and pizza and burgers and fries and beer and all that standard American diet stuff. It just caught up with me. But the fact that I had been vegan from 2008 on or 2013, 100% on, he said, your diet saved your life. I love that. And I love the way you're looking at it. You know, anytime a vegan gets sick, whether they're a long-term vegan or vegan for a, a short time, it's, they always say, well, it's because you're vegan. And I love this perspective. Yeah. It really opened my eyes. Yeah. I love that and, doctor. Uh, I love that doctor who said that. Um, I'm very thankful that I'm still here and I'm okay. And I can still do what I love to do. I can still eat the, the food I love to eat. and try to help people along the way. Do you think, I mean, uh, the fact that you waited a little bit to go to the hospital, did that make a difference? I do know they have a drug. They really encourage you. So the, the acronym for stroke is FAST. Um, and I'm trying to remember, <laughs> it's on my website. If you have the drooping, if you have the slurring, um, if you if you if you have balance issues, any of that stuff, it means time to get to the hospital now. And if you get there within the first twenty four hours, they can give you a pill or a, a shot called the clot buster. And if you have a clotting kind of stroke, it will break up that clot immediately, so they say, and prevent you from having any major side effects. I waited 24 hours, so I didn't do that. Did it make a difference in me? No, I think my diet saved me. I really do. But any other person who's having a stroke, if you do get there within the first 24 hours, they can give you that shot. I don't know the name of the drug. I just know they call it a clot buster. Nice. Did when you, When you first didn't feel well, did you suspect it was a stroke? Oh, heck no. Like I said, I was medically trained. I knew the symptoms, or I thought I did. It, it never crossed my mind. I just knew it was something I've never felt before. And it was, that was disorienting. That was kind of scary. It's like, okay, I'm not sick with a cold. I don't have a flu. I didn't eat anything funny. I eat the same food every day. Why do I feel so funny? What is this? And I, oh, I was hoping it would go away. And that's why I stubbornly waited. But the next day it didn't, it was worse and I couldn't talk. I mean, my speech was really, really bad. And uh, when I got home from the hospital, uh, my wife and my, my son came out from Texas. He, he thought he was gonna lose his pop. Um, they took me to the beach. So here in Oregon, Cannon Beach is my happy place. They took me out there and I actually took my camera with me and I did a little, cause nobody knew my blog people, my, my fans and friends on the uh, internet, none of them knew, so I had to tell them. And I made a video out there and you can hear it in my speech, it's so slurred. It's on my website, but anyway. Did any of the plant-based doctors weigh in about this? Um, like I said, Dr. Esselton called me, which was a privilege just to talk to him on the phone. And he recommended Craig and Dr. John. We, we emailed actually quite a bit back and forth after that. Um, he was really sorry that they couldn't handle me at the 10 day and it was canceled. But I told him what I had done and he was very happy. Did and you really, end up going to the virtual McDougal program? No, I didn't do that. I could have. Oh. 
Okay. Hey, I, I pulled up on Amazon your apron in case people want to know, Kathy, what it says is vegan. I know you could never do that. No, I don't eat fish. Yes, I get enough protein. My D12 is fine. Thank you. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. What do I eat? Food. No, Ooh. I don't want to eat meat. Yes, I am still a vegan. <laughs> I put a link okay. to it in case anybody wants to get it. So our 10 minutes is up. If there's any pressure left in here, I'm going to just pop this up a little bit till my little tab here and the answer pie goes down. Now we get to the fun part. So the mic I'm wearing is kind of new. I bought this just for you, AJ. Well, thank you. I love I love the purple lighting, though. It's almost like you did that for me as well. <laughs> this is where I shoot my blog photos right here on this island. And uh, who knows, maybe after today, I'll be doing some more videos. I don't know. But I bought this mic just so I could walk around and talk to you and not be distracted by more stuff. And I'm going to try to mute it when I turn the blender on because it's going to be kind of loud. All right. So our chilies are done. Are you going to write a book of all your wonderful blog recipes? You and about a million people have asked me that. In fact, I talked to you one time at a, a, an event we were at and you gave me some advice. Oh, cool. Thanks. I'm glad. I, I want to. I've never done it before. It's kind of daunting. Um, but I do know there's a lot of people that want one. So will I probably eventually? Yeah. When? I don't know. Okay. So we got our Vitamix here. I'm going to take these chilies. This makes it so easy, this little basket. Just jump them right in. All right. There's going to be some seeds in here. You can't get every single seed as much as I would like to, but it's okay. We're going to strain it. Okay. So we got our Vitamix. I got four cloves of garlic. I'm going to add that. I got a half a teaspoon of ground cumin and two teaspoons of Mexican oregano. Now, people ask me all the time, where do you find your Mexican oregano? And it's different from your Mediterranean oregano. It's a different plant altogether. So if you go to that same section where they have the chilies, they usually have some spices hanging up right above them. And this is Mexican oregano. So it's a little coarser. And it definitely has a different flavor. So I recommend that if you can find it. If you can't, your typical everyday oregano will be fine, but you're really missing out because this adds a unique flavor to it. So I'm gonna dump that in. I got a half teaspoon of salt. If you're watching your salt, you can leave that out for now. Taste it when you're done and add as much or as little as you want. Yeah, I'm curious with having had a stroke, what, did the doctors weigh in on whether or not you should be eating salt and if so, how much? You know, my doctor from the hospital and my family doc, they don't talk to me about diet, hardly at all. In fact, the food I had in the hospital was horrible. I, I told them I'm a vegan, so they brought me a veggie burger. and It was greasy, it had real cheese on it. My wife ate that. I had, I think I had carrot sticks and celery, like a, like a crudite plate. And there might've been hummus or not. I had oatmeal the next morning. It was like the worst oatmeal in the world. They're, the hospital food for a vegan is horrible. But my normal doc, I've tried to talk to him about my diet. He won't listen. He's wow. typical everyday doctor. Good for you. You keep doing what you're doing. I don't hear it though. So this is my chili water. It should be about two cups left. I'm gonna dump that in there too. Like I said, if you want to, you can taste that with a spoon. Make sure it's not too bitter for you. If it is, just throw that away and add two cups of fresh water and you'll be fine. So we've got our chili, our garlic, our water. We've got everything in here. Am I missing anything? Nope. 
All right, I'm going to try to mute this so I don't blast your ears. I think Zoom will probably mute it. Too loud. Oh no, it's not. You know what, Chuck? Zoom has this wonderful feature. It mutes it. It's very. It's, it's actually quite soft. At least that's what I'm hearing. Okay. Well, maybe I'll talk to guy, you guys, while he's blending. It'll come over to me. I'm not sure. Yeah. So there's a lot of like health shaming in the vegan movement. Like if a vegan gets sick, you know. And we got to stop that because people get sick, whether they're vegan or not. There's accidents, there's genetic things. It's not everything is because of a person's diet. Right. Um, our friend, Brian and Jessica Kroc are experiencing that right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I wish her the best. Yeah, she's a trooper, man. I, yeah. So Tia says, when you cook them in the Instant Pot, were you just doing that to soften the chilies? He doesn't own an Instant Pot. Can a stovetop be used or a crock pot? Absolutely. You just want to soften the chilies a little bit to make them easy to blend. Because if you blend the dried chilies, you're going to have chili powder, right? So you want to Instant Pot five minutes. If you're going to do it on your stovetop, put some hot water, cover the chilies, bring it to a boil. 10 to 15 minutes just until they're soft. And then again, either strain that water out and save two cups or dump the water out and add fresh water when you're blending. So after we're all blended, I have my strainer and this is where it gets messy. Did you cook before you became vegan? Off and on, but not that much. I, I don't have an answer. So um, you're basically kind of self-taught? Yes, completely. Did you With use everything. Any, any books or blogs at the beginning for inspiration, like maybe Mary McDougal? Um, yes, in the beginning, I have a, like... Mary's corn butter. I made a modified version of that, but I really didn't follow that anybody. I just cooked the food I used to eat. And I think that's what kind of sets me apart. I call it comfort food. When I became vegan, I didn't want to eat quinoa or any of that weird stuff to me back then was weird. I didn't want to be vegan. I want to eat my normal food. So I figured out how to make my normal food plant-based. So I have my chili, I have my tacos, my chili sauce, my burritos, I have pizza, chicken and dumplings, hot and sour soup, you know, comfort food that we all grew up with. And I think that makes it a lot easier for brand new people who are afraid they might have to give up, give up their favorite foods, carrot dogs, whatever. I just started cooking until it tastes good. And my wife's father, when he was alive, it's funny, I was still working for Intel and I would cook for him, for the family. And he was always telling me I missed my calling. He says, Chuck, you should have been a chef. And I laughed back then, that was ridiculous because I'm a semiconductor tech, I'm a maintenance tech. I work on machines, I don't cook. And now here I am doing exactly what he said I should do. Maybe you could call your book Accidentally Vegan, Cook Until It Tastes Good. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, why not? You know, by Chuck, the brand new vegan. So all I'm doing here is just straining, I'm pushing that chili sauce through the sieve. 
and what it's going to do is get rid of a lot of the skin. If there are any seeds left over, you can get cleaned. It's going to keep all that here in the sieve. And that's what helps make it better, bitter too. And there we go. And this is where I usually make a mess. Do you cook every day? And do you, are I, you the primary cook in your family? Yeah, my wife gave it up. I told you, she threw her apron at me. She said, you're the cook. And I've been cooking ever since. And uh, there's some things I cook she doesn't like. She's not spicy like I am, my chili sauce, even though we met in New Mexico. But for the most part, she likes my cooking, so I keep doing it. And there we go. We have about two cups of red chili sauce. Yum. How long will that last in the fridge? In my fridge, maybe a day or two. Oh, wow. I... Yum. And if you did not salt it, you can add salt now if you want and get it to where you like it. Um, people ask me, is it spicy? Depends. I'm a bad judge for telling somebody what's spicy and what's not because I love spicy food. So what's a, a two or three for spice to me might be a 10 or 15 to you. But I don't think that spicy, these chilies you get in a store, these bags of chilies, they won't say hot, medium, mild, extra hot. Sometimes they do, but these like El Guapo, they don't. And I've never found them to be extraordinarily spicy, but that's me. Yep. What you said you were a you're a retired semiconductor technician. What is that? Yeah. Um, so Intel makes the semiconductor chips that go in your computer. I worked for a company called Corvo, and they made the little chips that go inside your cell phone. So those little tiny chips that run the whole thing, the processors. I worked in a fab. And that's what they made. So I wore the, the bunny suit, the hood, the mask. We were wearing masks a long time before COVID ever hit. Uh, the bunny suit, you've probably seen the Intel bunnies. Remember the commercials for Intel? Yep. I wore that for 30 years. And I worked on the machines. If the machines broke, as the operators were running them, they would call the maintenance guys and we would go over and try to fix it. So I was part plumber, part mechanic, part electronic tech, part cleaner, part whatever, whatever it took to get the machine back online to keep making the wafers. That's what we did. Okay. What is Indie Dental? You In the show notes you gave me, it says define Indie Dental. I have no idea what that is. You wrote you wrote that down. Links, define I-N-D-I-D-E-N-T-A-L-L, -L, not live yet, but should be by the show. I don't know what Indie Dental is either. Wow, it's funny that came out like that. No, it should be b and Community. Okay. That's my brand new group that I just formed. How it came out is that dental, I have no idea. Anyway, I can send you the, the proper link, but... That's oh, no, I, I'm, I'm, sure I put, I'm sure I put it in the show notes, but it's really weird what I'm, what I'm seeing, Indie Dental. Sounds like a I have no idea. It should be BNV community. Yeah, tell us about your new community. So for uh, 2018, I started a Facebook group. And it grew very rapidly. And we have about 23,000 people. And it's more of a support group. We exchange recipes, encourage each other, do whatever we can to help people who are brand new. And I say we, I have three admins that help me. But Facebook's kind of under fire lately. A lot of people are leaving Facebook. And if you think about it, if you have a Facebook group, it's not really your group, it's Facebook's. And they could pull a plug whenever they want. And they could ban you if they want. I have lots of friends who've been in Facebook jail. I have myself once. Me it's too, a, for a typo, for like a week. It's a typo. <laughs> They, they thought it was something else. It's so infuriating. And it's like, okay, what can I do about it? Well, I can make my own group. And it's outside of Facebook. 
It's the same platform that Rip Esselstyn is using for Plant Strong. It's the same platform that Dr. Uh, Campbell is using for CNS Kitchen. It's called Mighty Networks. And I made a brand new community, like two weeks old. And we have about 350 some people over there now. It's just for the people who want to be away from Facebook. It, no distractions. There's no ads. Um, there's no hacking. No spam bots trying to join. All the stuff we see in Facebook. It's uh, a lot more personal. And I like it. My people seem to like it so far. So we're trying it out. And it's so not that I want to leave Facebook. I want to have something in place in case I ever do leave Facebook, whether by my choice or not. Nice. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. Sounds wonderful. Let's see if there's any questions in the chat. What it, Sid says, what platform are, what platform are you talking about? People want to know. What Mighty Networks. What's it called? The first say, what's the first word again? Mighty. Mighty. Okay. Mighty Networks. It sounds good. I haven't heard of it. So very cool. I agree with you. Facebook is a, is a mixed bag, isn't it? It is. And I love it. And it's a good way to just lose yourself for an hour killing time, doing absolutely nothing but scrolling through stuff. But the nice thing about the new group, we're really focused. So you won't find cat videos. You won't find, you know, Facebook stuff. We're all focused on helping each other. All the different threads in the group, the conversations are separated. So if you want to join the recipe thread, you can. If you don't care about vegan for animals, you can just not join that one. You can. We have probably 25 or 30 different topics that we can join and be a part of if you want. And you pick and choose which ones you like. Great. Uh, Conrad says, do you have a good recipe for a taco truck green salsa made with tomatillos? Oh, I do have a salsa verde made with tomatillos. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it's called. But if you go to my website in the search bar and just search for tomatillos or salsa verde, you'll find it. I love tomatillos. What's the most popular recipe on your blog? That's hard. My chili is pretty amazing, I think. Um, I've seen pictures that my fans have sent in of the awards they won entering my chili and their chili cook-off and whatever state they live in, including Texas. And I saw one guy with a big, huge trophy he came in second place with white chili recipe. So it's pretty popular. Uh, the carrot dogs are popular. I have an orange chicken that I make with cauliflower. It's pretty popular. What's your personal favorite? I think I just made it. I love this stuff. And it, on you, everything, right? I do. If you're doing a Madugal program or a Mary's Mini or anything like that, or you're eating just potatoes, this is wonderful on potatoes. And you can add a little cilantro on top for some greens, yeah, whatever you like. It is so good. Yep. Well, Carol Ann says her family cooks your chili all winter. Sid says your cauliflower sloppy joe recipe is delicious. And I saw one. Oh, uh, Gypsy says, love, love Chuck. You really need to put out a cookbook. I've heard that so many times. I'll yep. work on it. I'll work on it, I promise. Yeah. Are there any recipes you've yet to perfect? Oh, boy. Um, I don't know. I, I'm running out of recipe ideas because, as I told you, I cook. I blog what I cook and what I eat. And I'm not one of those people who needs to eat something entirely different every single day. I can eat the same thing every single day and be perfectly happy with it. Um, so I don't know. I'm always looking for ideas for new recipes. Um, I don't know if that answers your question or not. Well, that's okay, because um, the next question you'll be able to answer from Stephanie, which almost every guest gets is, what do you eat in a day? 
what do I eat in a day? In the morning, uh, toast. I have a hummus recipe. I usually use that. Uh, sometimes I put a little Marmite on. People don't like Marmite. It's really salty, but I loved it. And I ate that a lot on Ezekiel toast when I was going through my stroke recovery. Those 30 days, I had my oatmeal, my blueberries, my Ezekiel toast, and Marmite. For lunch, it'll be usually a potato, some red chili sauce, some green chili. Um, salsa works. Sometimes we have leftover, whatever we had the night before. In this case, last night we had um, like a country potato dish, diced potatoes in a pan with mushrooms, bell peppers, onion, and then red chili sauce on top or green chili, whatever you like. And for dinner, my wife loves tofu. I make a lot of stir fries. Um, she likes my hot and sour soup. I'll make that. If I make my chili, I'm the only one eating it. So I usually, <laughs> I don't make it that often, but I love it. Uh, same with my bean soup. Yeah, we eat a lot of stir fries. Anytime we can get vegetables in or I can cook with vegetables, I will. Nice. What do you do for exercise? Funny you should ask. Not much. And I need to. And it's, it's been the weak link for me personally um, for a long time. After my stroke, I did walk every single day and I need to start doing that again. We have tried, uh, and my wife still does. She loves it. You're familiar with the VR goggles? Mm hmm she has a program that I got for her called Supernatural. It's kind of like Beat Saber, the game, where Supernatural is more of a workout. You're doing squats. You're, you're batting things. She loves that. And she'll run that for an hour or so at a time. I've done uh, a kind of yoga called DDP yoga. DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, the wrestling yoga, the, the manly bro yoga. So I've tried some of that. It's hard for me to find something to stick to, because I've tried a lot of different things. Walking is usually the easiest for me. Um, after my stroke, it's funny, I would walk, and I would take my phone with me, of course, and just take pictures of whatever I saw on my walk. Silly little things like, there's a bird, look at this flower, look at this bug, whatever, right? And people on my Facebook group loved it so much, they started doing it. And now we have Walking Wednesday, which is like a thing. And I've seen pictures from all over the world where people will go out and walk and take picture of their scenery, their landscape, and send it to our group for Walking Wednesday. Very cool. We got a, you got a lot of fans watching today and they're telling exactly what recipes they love. For example, Rose <laughs> says she loves your vegan orange chicken and tacos. And I'm seeing a lot of that. Uh, your cheese sauce, Sandy saying. So you've got a lot of friends and fans watching. Well, I'm finally glad to get you on the show. I know it's been a while. We had some some fits and stops, but you're here. Yep. And you're doing well. And I'm so happy about that. The, the, the stroke, it didn't hurt, right? It's not like, I mean, it wasn't painful. No, no it was just a weird, uh, dizzy, vertical-like feeling that made you nauseous and you know something's not right and you know it's not the cold it's not the flu of course we didn't know what COVID felt like yet but and I, I I dare say this I still haven't caught COVID yet I've been free so anyway it's just a weird feeling I didn't know what it was it scared me because it was I knew something was wrong I said something is not right this is not supposed to feel like this. Something's wrong with me. And why the heck am I talking funny? People need to know that there's different types of symptoms because I just worry that other people may not get the help they need. Not really, you know, they might think, well, I just have a flu or something, you know? Right, right. So the important thing for a stroke, and I'm trying to remember that acronym, and I've talked about it so many times. I just talked about it at a VegFest potluck a few, a few days ago or weeks ago, but if you put your arms out in front of you like this, and if you have an arm that droops, 
like this, one side or the other. That's a good sign. If you see any kind of droopy on one side of your face, the eye, the side of your mouth, to go along with that. Because strokes really happen one, on one side of your brain or the other. Um, that's a good sign. If you have any kind of speech difficulty at all, that's a really good sign. It doesn't have to be all three, like I was stupidly thinking. If you have any one of those, you should call somebody right away. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I'm glad you're here to tell this story. Me too. Yeah. And if you need any help getting that book out, let me know, you know, because I think you got a great, well, now you have like two, well, you can combine the book, your story and recipes, but you got at least two books in you now. Well, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll get on it. Yeah. Or at least get your recipes out because they're so, you know, and just because they're on the blog, you know, like with Kathy Fisher, all her recipes were free on straight up food, but she still did, you know, her book did really well because people love to have everything organized in one place. I know so many of my people in the Facebook group have three ring binders full of my recipes and that's their book. And they're still begging me for a, a real book that they can have in their kitchen. And they're very specific too. They want full glossy photos. They want binder. They want <laughs> laid flat. Uh, they've told me all about what they want. So I hear you guys. I hear you. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you go so you can get cracking on your book. Uh, thanks. All right. Well, thanks so much, Chuck. It was really fun catching up with you. Thank you. You too. Talk My to you later. Pleasure. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Lauren Burnick of The Well Elephant, and she is going to be making a drool-worthy binge.